Well, this is gonna be a fun video to do with you folks. Welcome to the channel, welcome to another episode. I am Aaron, your host here at Gideon's Tactical. And uh, I first saw this blade all the way back at Blade Show and I basically couldn't put it down for the hour and a half that I was at the Condor Knife and Tool booth. What we're looking at is the Primitive Sequoia from Condor Knife and Tool. It was designed uh, by Matt Graham, who is uh, one of the hosts of Dual Survival. Um, and got to meet him, got to talk with him, just a cool guy. And so we're gonna take a look at this today, pros and cons, whether or not this is a good tool to use and what is it best suited for. Are there some drawbacks that we're gonna discuss as well? And uh, really look at the Sequoia on whether or not it's gonna be the right tool for you. So let's go ahead and talk the blade. Man, this thing is sick. I love the etching that they have done on here, the kind of staining that they did on the upper portion and the satin on the grind itself super cool now what we're looking at here is from the handle to the tip is 8.375 inches so a little over almost an eight and a half inch blade here super nice to see that so large profile but 0 0.12 or an eighth of an inch thick very unusual to see this large a knife that is this thin so that means that this thing is ultra light coming in at 11 ounces crazy to see that large knife at 11 ounces i mean most knives in that same size range here's my se hungalus 2. i mean this thing is you know 0.19 on the thickness and this thing comes in at over a pound you know i think it's like 17 18 ounces something like that now along with that this is a very wide blade at about two and a half inches at its widest point almost which is really impressive and different than a lot of other knives again i'm just going to use this se hunglis we're going to be doing a lot of comparison you can see how much wider that blade profile is so you're looking at a convex grind into a flat grind which is really nice to see 90 degree spine on that and that really nice really just great great profile love the profile very workable very usable now uh, the thing to note out of the box which was awesome razor hair popping sharp this is the first condor knife and tool blade that i've gotten that is that quality of edge uh, i used to review I, I reviewed about two or three other knives like four years ago and they both came to me like dull as butter knives and so i kind of rode off condor for a while and then when i saw this at shot show not only the balance the design um, just what it was offering something different and unique at an eighth of an inch thick and the razor sharpness at shot show i was like man okay if this comes to me razor sharp when i order it you know nine months later that'll be awesome and it has it's just super super razor sharp and super easy to keep an edge on it because it's made out of 1075 steel made in el salvador now 1075 steel is super tough super durable it's going to rust really quick on you even though they have put some sort of kind of a stain on this blade and you could put patinas and that type of thing on it um and so super shock resistant, you know, hard use. You're not going to snap this thing in half. It's very tough, durable, somewhat flexible, and just a tough blade. The downside is that it doesn't hold an edge very well. I don't know if you can see this here. I have a little bit of a roll in the edge after one day of use with what you've seen here. And we've taken this out several times now. And what I've experienced is basically I get some sort of edge damage every time I go out and I have to tune it up either when I get home because I didn't notice that until we got home uh, or the, uh, w the first time I took it out, it got damaged about halfway through the day. Now with a good diamond stone from like WorkSharp, uh, I have a WorkSharp field sharpener that I take with me everywhere. Love that thing, links below for that guy. Um, great field sharpening kit, but um, uh, as long as you have that, you know, you can get this razor hair popping sharp in like two minutes because of the um, lower heat treat that this has to offer. So that's a trade off with the price to value. And we're going to transition now to just kind of run in two other blades here. My uh, SE6 that has been tricked out from the knife connection with Kydex sheath and G10 handle scales and my SE Hungalus Mark II. So the reason I'm running these in to, is to discuss several things here. First off is the steel quality. So as I said, tends to get damaged. Now it's just rolls, you know, and so it's super easy to tune up. But my 1095 that I have here from uh, SE or like a K-Bar 1095 or an Ontario, it, I don't have that type of issue. You know, the only time that they really get damaged is either with like days and days of use or if I accidentally hit it with like a rock or something like that while I'm chopping, you know, and I miss and I hit, you know, ding it into the dirt or something like that. That's the only time that I see damage, whereas this seems to damage up when we're doing chopping and batoning, bigger, harder tasks, quicker. And so that's just a trade-off. And so you better have, if you're going to go out and use this regularly, you got to have a good diamond stone and a ceramic rod with you or a leather strop so that when these little rolls and damage points happen, you can tune it up real quick. If you don't have that, you're going to be kind of disappointed and you're going to constantly be going home with a kind of jack up blade 
Now, the size of something and weight balance is something I really want to hit with you, and it is going to be even thinner than the SE6 coming in again at 3 16 the, the deal is that what really sets this apart for me is that it weighs the same as this SE6, but it's larger and it's going to out chop and out baton this SE6. Now it'll dull faster and you'll have to work with it more in that sense, but it'll actually, when you go to swing, it's going to take deeper chunks out quicker, easier. The handle is larger, so you have more you know real estate to work with. And even in the finer tasks, it can do anything an SE6 can do on the finer tasks. So really, if this was 1095, this would probably outperform, you know, and it was a good heat treat, outperform my SE6 on most tasks that I would ever want a midweight survival knife to do, which is really impressive. So I'd love to see a 1095 version of this with a good heat treat in the future that doesn't tend to dull as quickly. I think that would be awesome and would absolutely give like SE6s and, you know, BK7s and um, rats, uh, rat sevens and all those type of tools that are in this size range because it's the same weight but larger blade profile a run for their money so except for edge retention this thing is really can outperform an se6 or knives of this size which is definitely saying something so again really hoping that condor goes out there and upgrades the steel in the future and i want to run in the se Hungalus 2 just to give you like some weight and size perspective now the Hungalus 2 will out chop and will out baton the Condor, just because of its not only thickness, but its weight. So it will do a better job in that sense. And you're getting, you know, obviously better edge retention. You're getting a nice modular Kydex sheath, but you're going to pay about $70 more uh, to $80 more for the Essie. The, the difference in what the Condor has going for it over the SE when it comes to performance is the balance. Even though they're the same size and blade length and handle profile and like size range, uh, this is actually gonna be way more well balanced because it's about six ounces lighter, which means it may fall short compared to an SE Hungalus in the chopping and batoning arena, but when it comes to the finer carving, whittling, notching, um, you know, making a spear, making, you know, maybe a fish, you know, spear or, you know, uh, uh, notches for some, maybe like a four figure trap or something, this is going to be less fatiguing on your hand for longer periods of time, which is awesome to see that aspect. And that's where this kind of comes in between. So really when it comes down to it, this Condor uh, Sequoia is kind of a blend of both of these performances which is really cool to see. So it's something that's unique and different. And I love unique and different. And uh, with some upgraded steel, this could really be a tool that a lot of you get huge uh, usefulness and capability out of. All right, we're going to take a look at the handle here. I actually really dig this handle. They did a really good job overall with the design. We're looking at brown micarta, which is really nice with pinned in here. No loosening up, no wobbling, no issues. Really well uh, lined up. You know, they're, they're not floating one side to another. So not going to create any goofy angles or anything like that all the way down, all the way through. Really machined well, nice and rounded, not blocky. That's a huge plus. The overall length is going to be 5.875 inches overall length. So you're looking at almost six inches of handle, which is really nice. And then it's maximum thickness. You're going to be looking at 0.83. So very nice to see that. I wear large size gloves, as you guys know. So that really gives me basically two grips. I have this rear grip for doing chopping and hacking, and then I have this front forward grip for carving and whittling and what this really allows for is for you to get your finger right along here you got I, with my large hands it works well i can get right up on the the blade there and then go to town and use this for quite a long period of time without any sort of pain or issues like that but somebody maybe with a real small size hands this distance right here if you're choking up and wanting to do really fine notching and things like that, I could see that kind of fatiguing your hand because it is kind of wide. So just keep that in consideration for the really fine detailed work. It works fine in my large size hands, but I was just thinking of people with smaller hands might give a little bit of uncomfortability, but I like how the edge comes right up to the handle. No uh, ricasso to worry about or anything like that. Just really well done. And uh, giving you, when you use that rollover lanyard, I mean, this thing will stay in your hand all day long. No, you know, wanting to fly out, no hot spots, no reverberations or issues whatsoever. So you can not only carve and whittle and, you know, do bushcraft grips and reverse, you know, chest lever grips all day long, but then you can back up and get some really good swings in without fatiguing your hand. So this creates very minimal fatigue hand for hours on end, which is what you want with a good bush knife. So we're going to go ahead and talk price, and I do believe that this is kind of one of the downer factors on this knife. Now, being 1075 steel, it's a decent steel as well as long as it's heat treated well. Um, you know, the leather sheath, micarta, those are all good things. Uh, but this 
I purchased for $87 over on Amazon. I will have links over in the description below. So at the end of this video, if this is a knife that you really enjoy and really dig and you think you're gonna like and you're, you're gonna get a lot of use out of, when you use those hyperlinks, it helps us get out there, continue to buy knives just like this one. I bought this one um, and give you guys full comprehensive videos to help you guys always make the best purchasing choice. Now that's the cheap end. I've actually seen this for like $106 on some websites, which I think is way overpriced. In my opinion, even the $87 $7 that I paid for this is a little too much for the steel. I think the design is there. I think, you know, the other materials and stuff, but, um, you know, you can get easily, you know, good 1095 USA made stuff uh, for that same price point. And it's going to be thicker steel. You know, they're going to come with usually micarta or some other type of Palmer. You know, I'm thinking like the uh, Becker series. I'm thinking of like Ontario Knife Company. You know, they're using 5160 or 1095, a tougher, more durable steel. So I think this really should have been more around like the $60 price point would have been a little bit more uh, feasible, a little more reasonable. I think it is somewhat overpriced. So you need to decide throughout this video is $80 at the low end really the price that you should be paying for this or are there other options in this price range that would just be better options overall you've got to make that choice as you're watching this video and seeing what this can perform and what it can so do. condor is known for doing good quality leather sheaths and this is no exception good stitching all the way through you got the embossing of their logo on the back you got probably a three inch belt loop that rise rather low so you're not gonna have this big handle you know digging into your ribs or anything like that no drainage hole but good stitching and good thickness right there decent friction i mean if i hold it upside down and i don't shake it it's not going to want to come out uh, and then you pull that sucker out and there you have it. So decent for a leather sheath and particularly at this price point, very doable, probably wouldn't need to upgrade for quite a while. So time for us to bring the Sequoia, Primitive Sequoia to a close, give you guys my final thoughts on this tool. Um, so we've talked about it in the price point, that's my really big beef with the tool. Uh, if this was around the $60 price point, I think it'd be a lot more doable for a lot of people. I think at 80 bucks, 90 bucks, I think, uh, a lot of people will still get joy out of it if you are looking for that really thin, lightweight, bigger blade. There's a lot going for this tool. Uh, the one caveat I would say is because of how thin it is, people who live like in uh, areas of the world that have a lot of hardwoods, we don't tend to have a lot of hardwoods here uh, in the Rocky Mountains. We have like pine, fir, and we have like cottonwoods and aspens, which none of those are really like hardwoods. So the 1075 is decent, but when you're trying to like split a piece of wood or a log, I could see just getting more edge damage, you know, um, over time than you would with like a 1095 blade. And with the eighth of an inch thick, with our pine and, you know, cottonwoods and aspens, it's not a big deal. It splits through everything easily. Um, but, you know, I could see like a piece of hickory or something, you, you're not going to split very well if you're going to baton. So I really believe that this is for people that live in either jungle environments, you know, um, like Florida, the south, you know, in certain areas where you're getting a lot of that green, um, you know, the South America area. Uh, or those of you who are in, you know, high altitude environments but tend to have um, lighter wood, if that makes sense. That's really where I see this guy shining, but the, it's just so unique. I just love it. There's just a lot, a lot going for this tool and I would love to see a rendition of it in like in 1095 in the future, I think would be super cool. But yeah, th that's really where I see this thing shining as like a lightweight, compact machete style tool that will give a lot of people a lot of really good use. So I hope this video has helped you guys out decide whether or not the Primitive Sequoia is the right tool for you seeing what it can do, what it can't do my thoughts and feelings on it and value point as well and that's what we always want to do here at the channel is help you guys spend your hard-earned money wisely so i want to thank you so much for coming over here today and checking out this channel please subscribe comment like share this video love to hear you guys thoughts join the conversation uh, by commenting below i always try to get back to you guys and answer any questions or comments or thoughts that you guys may have uh, check us out on all the relevant social media that's a great way to see what's coming instagram facebook we're always throwing up new content and stuff that's going to be coming down the line and check out the video that's popping up right now you know that's uh the most recent video after this one that we just posted up we post up videos two to three times every week so that you're always getting that fresh reliable content as we are going through gear and reviewing gears and giving you guys system ideas to just enjoy the outdoors to the fullest that's what we always want to do here at the channel so uh finally guys always remember stay equipped stay prepared see you out there